All right, today I'm going to show you how to perform ranking in Power BI. For the underlying data, I just created a random table in Excel, so don't ask me for the file. Uh, the three fields are just two random category fields, and then the last field is a value field. So we're going to take this, copy it, and we're just going to input it into Power BI, a completely new instance, and just paste it. Power BI is smart enough to recognize, or not recognize, but smart enough to suggest promoting the first row of your table to the headers. If that works for you, good. If it doesn't, you can always click undo or you can go in and further edit it, okay? Uh, in our case, it is perfectly fine, so we're gonna load it. Should load pretty quickly, right? Once it's done loading, let's go in and verify nothing funny happened, it's good. And then let's create a random table, all right? And then for the sake of visibility, I'm going to make this bigger. Okay. All right. So um, one last thing that we're going to do as per uh, data prep is um, we only have one real value here, which is this column here. Um, as it stands right now, it's an implicit value. Uh, if you're kind of new to Power BI, this might be over your head or you might not care. But um, as a matter of good practice, especially with values that you're going to be playing around with, uh, multiple times within your within your, your dashboard or your Power BI instance, you actually want to use explicit measures. So what's the difference? Um, implicit measures are automatic groupings by Power BI. Power BI will scan your data and then it will give it some character. And in our case for value, it's recognized it's a bunch of numerics and it's automatically giving it sort of a sum, sum character. And so Part of why, you know, on the surface, this is good because for most things it should be functional. But um, part of why you don't want to use implicit is because you don't have a level of control. Um, and also you have to always rewrite the, the formula if you are going to reference it. So in our case, you know, without getting too much into implicit versus explicit, uh, I'm going to create a explicit measure via the measure um, by, by creating a measure on it. All right. So I'm going to call it total. And I'm literally doing exactly what it's doing here now already. Uh, but I am explicitly calling it out, okay? So I'm going to sum the value. And just to show you my sleeves, it is exactly the same here. So nothing tricky, nothing weird. I'm going to even add the whole, the other category so that's fully fleshed out. And so you can see nothing funny, nothing weird, okay? It's the exact same thing. Um, but by doing this, you can reference it without rewriting it over and over again, all right? So one last thing we're going to do here is we're going to give it some more character. We're going to just give it a dollar sign value. So now it's in dollars, so it maybe means more to us. All right. So with that said, I'm just gonna get rid of the value. I'm gonna get rid of just one of the categories and then we're gonna go back to where we started. Okay. So now that we have a bunch of um, values and we have character, a category to it, uh, let's rank it. Okay. So to rank it, you have to create another measure, All right? We'll call this rank. And the, for, uh, the function that we're going to use is called rank X. Uh, like all functions, um, as a, has a handful of values that it would like to know. The ones in the brackets are always optional ones. Um, for rank X, the two key values it needs is a table value and an expression value. The table value tells rank X where to look for, uh, where to look for the data, and then the expression value tells it what to do with that value, okay? Um, so in our case, uh, the table is just gonna be table. We only have one, so it's called table. And what we're gonna do is we wanna sum up the values. So here I can explicitly write it all out but because i've already done it here in this explicit value i can just reference that oops all right so i'm gonna do it here so even before i put it in here it's not going to work i'm going to and i'm doing that on purpose because i think anyone who uses this function for the first time is naturally going to do this all right and um, i want it to fail on purpose because i think it gives us a good starting point to better understand how rank X works, okay? So I've, I've written in this, this function correctly, so to speak, and now I'm gonna add it to my table. When I add it to my table, it's not working the way I want, you know? I'm expecting something like one, two, three, four based on the values, but instead we're getting nothing but ones, okay? The reason that's the case is because we're using rank, we're using an X function that is a something X function, and uh, another similar function would be sum X. And um, what that means is any X function is a row iter iterator okay so what it's doing is you know i told it to look at look at a t the table of data and then find the sum but it's doing that it's doing that a little bit too too close to i, I guess 
too close within the lines. And so what the rank X is doing, because by nature of what it is, a row iterator, is it's just looking within the table, if you will, of row A and 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 ranking them. And then it's, and then after that, it's looking at the table of row B and then ranking it. But because row A, B, and C, and so forth only has one value, it's always going to be one for every single one. So in order for you to make this work and make rank X work, and sort of the takeaway here is you've got to give it more context. Rank X and a lot of the X, some X functions are very finicky, and they really depend on the context of which they're, they're being used. So if you write a really cool rank, uh, a really cool X function, be careful because it may not translate very well across other tables and graphs or, or, or what have you. I don't know if it makes sense to make Oh, no, yeah, you can use it for a graph. So how would you fix this? Well, the straight answer to fixing this is you've got to give it some some context. So within the context of, of, of this table, which is I not only want to look at the total, but I want to look at the, the entire table's total and within category, we have to we have to tell it those two things. So so um, rather than say just look at the table of the row, we're going to say now look at everything within category one. OK. And by doing this, we're providing rank X the context of saying, look at everything within this table. All right. So when you do that, it should work. And you see that it works perfectly. One, two, three, four. All right. So rank X needs um, character. You have to tell it our context. You need to tell it how to how to work and what it's looking at. Cases of how this is going to break will be, let's just say I added the other category back in. All right. I add it back in, and if you see here, now it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. What is it doing? If you, if off, uh, looking at it very quickly, it may look like it's random numbers, but it is taking what you told it previously. Just look within the category of values and give it a rank. What it's doing here when you fully flesh it out is it's looking within each category. So if you notice here, um, oh, that's funny. Why is it one, two, three, four? One, one. Uh, that is actually let's see what's going on here oh oops oops I'm completely blanking out okay so let me move uh, category two to the front so yeah no no it's working perfectly so the reason why this law looks weird is because um, because we added this other other context of category two um, it is still working like it like it's doing but it's now doing it within the second category so before we were telling it, hey, within category one, rank it, it's still doing that. But because we add this other context of category two, now it's doing it over and over again, iteratively within all the different categories. So the takeaway here is you have to always be mindful of what you're doing. Otherwise, it might break. And to fix it is pretty simple. You just have to give it context. Um, so in this case, you know, if you wanted to fix it and do something like this, all you'd have to do is give it context of like, no, look at everything in its entirety and give it a rank. So to do that, you just create a measure and you do something like this, rank two. So um, once again, rank X. And once again, we can't just say table. We have to say what table. So last time we said, you know, look within the context of category one. You know, if you want to look at the table in its entirety, regardless of the categories, what you're going to want to do is you're going to just say all, right? All table. And then once again, the explicit value. Okay. When you put it in there, it will now work perfectly. So it looks like gibberish here, but if we sort it, it should work. See, highest 453, eyeballing, it looks good. One, two, three, four, it works perfectly, okay? So once again, rank X is powerful, but if you don't know the right context, it will look wonky and it might just break completely. So that's the double-edged sword of rank X. It's good, but it needs a lot of help, okay? So let's, let's break this again, okay? So now that we have a fully fleshed out table, and let's just remove one of the categories, we'll just say category two, okay? So when you do a category that the rank rank uh, measures that you built are not um, not taking into account, it will break once again. So see here, it's all one one. That doesn't make sense. All right. So keep that in mind. The way to fix it is just simply um, account for it. So rather than category one, we change to category two. All right. So let's just go back to category one. Let's see what else we can do with this. So category one, the first ranking, because it takes into category context. Um, it works perfectly. But what if you have like, a, let's just say a slicer off of category one. What happens if you start slicing things? So category A works fine because there's only one value. What happens if we do 
multiple values. One, two works fine as well. Three, actually, let's try this. There you go. Here's a better illustrator. What happens if you click multiple, um, multiple values for the category and you want it to re-rank? In this case, we did A, B, and D, and it ranked one, two, and four. Why does it do that? Because it's not taking at all into account the filter. It is still at its core. If we look at rank at its core, we're saying, hey, the data that you want to look at is the entire table, regardless of whatever's coming from outside. So that's why this is still ranked four, because even though we did not filter this table for, th uh, for C, it still sees it at its core, okay? So if you want to start uh, building a, a more robust rank X, and, and, or maybe it's more appropriate to say, if you plan on filtering your table, then you're going to have to adjust it. And the way to adjust it is you just use a different version of all. We're going to use all selected, because all selected as it sounds takes into account slicer impact, okay? So we're going to create a new uh, rank. We'll call this rank three. I'm going to do rank X. And once again, uh, we'll do all. But like I was saying before, we're going to do all selected. And this time it says returns all rows in the table, uh, ignoring any filters that have been applied inside the query, but keeping filters from outside. So in short, that means, all right, if you're going to use, use any slicers, we'll look, we'll look at it. So we'll do category one because that's what we're slicing. And then once again, the explicit measure. I want to say that it's being referenced. Oh, oops, I did not close the bracket. Total. Okay. And we add that in. And it works. One, two, three. Voila. Perfect. All right. And so um, I'll just stop here, but that is effectively how you do it. Um, you just need to always give the right context. If you're going to use filters, you need to do all selected. If you're not, you can kind of get away with all, but honestly, it wouldn't hurt to use all selected because it's kind of more robust than all. Um, so yeah, just always keep in mind how you're slicing and dicing um, the values that you're counting on and you should be fine. So yeah.